Well, the, the euro is very much like the Articles of Confederation were in the United States uh, prior to the creation of our Constitution. When you have a confederation of states that are not, in fact, united politically, that don't have a common taxing system, you're not achieving the benefits of scale that could come from true union. So this has been a, a, a boom for people in the catering business, a boom for people who write for magazines and newspapers or on TV, but it's, it's basically a fool's mission. And there are huge divergences of interest throughout the Eurozone. People in the North think one way, people in the South a different way. And, you know, the marriage was doomed from the start. Uh, so now comes the tough part where we've got to raise interest rates around the world. We've got to let loose the creative hand to do some uh, creative destruction uh, in the, the industries that have too much capacity. And I, I, I think the Euro's days are numbered. Charles Ortel with The Washington Times talking about calls to abandon the euro and trade in austerity for deficit spending. Even the man who created the euro, former German finance minister Oscar Lafontaine, he says that's the way to go. Why? Because unemployment is exceeding levels not seen since the Great Depression in Spain, Greece, Portugal, Italy, what we call Southern Europe. That doesn't bode well for Germany, which depends on trade with the rest of Europe, including Southern Europe. Remember when recession was a word nobody wanted to use? Well, according to our next guest, we may soon have to use a, an even less desirable word to describe Europe's economy, depression. The guest is Peter Marizzi, professor at the University of Maryland. Are you talking about all of Europe in depression or just Southern Europe? Well, certainly right now, Greece, Spain, and Portugal are in a depression, likely Italy as well. That is a recession, a deep recession for which they cannot recover. That, that there's nothing that'll get them out short of uh, a World War II. Uh, the rest of Europe, well, they depend on exporting south into those countries. If France follows them down, then Germany won't have enough of a market for what it sells. And then I would suggest all of Europe, uh, to some measure, will be in a recession from which it can't recover. And at that point, we will be talking depression. This currency is the primary reason it has happened. And like Herbert Hoover, uh, Angela Merkel has applied all the wrong medicine. It hasn't worked. And she continues to apply it and is likely to be reelected this fall. And unless Italy decides to exit the euro, there's no way out for the rest of Europe. So you're saying there's only one way uh, that uh, the euro comes uh, unglued, and that's if uh, southern European countries like Italy leave. You can't have a uh, a conference of all the countries and a decision that uh, some countries will just have to go back to, you know, Italy going back to liras and Spain to pesos and that type of thing, going back to their currencies, Greece, the drachma, the Germans, the Deutsche Mark, and what have you, that we just can't go back? I mean, you can't put the horse back in the barn? Well, you have to have some precipitating event. I mean, Angela Merkel will have to step back from what has been the pillar of her policy, and that is to impose uh, the German model on the rest of Europe, and uh, that's going to be very difficult for her to do. Uh, and as a consequence, what I see is halfway measures like we're seeing in France. You know, they would really like a change in policy from Germany so they could have a little more stimulus. One of the things to recognize is stimulus spending won't get them out. It's not enough. It's not a matter of austerity versus stimulus, and that's all they're debating right now. Until the terms of the debate change, I don't see a sort of a grand bargain being cut. So it would have to be Italy bolting saying we've had enough, or even perhaps Greece, but I don't know that if Greece is enough to do it. Certainly Cyprus wouldn't have been. And at that point, there may be some conference to work it out. But at the end of the day, you watch, Germany will try to impose draconian terms on these countries because they will never be able to really repay what they owe. With their own currencies, the value of those currencies will fall, and uh, they simply won't be able to pay it at the old par values against what will become the Deutsche Mark. Can they just walk away from the Germans? Can they just walk away from the German bankers without paying a heavy cost? Well, we've had a lot of failures in the United States during panics of that kind in the past, not most recently. And I think that at the end of the day, when people foolishly lend money, uh, they get what they deserve. The Germans will have to bail out their banks. You know, the, 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 if Angela Merkel really wants the uh, euro to, uh, to continue, then she's going to have to accept two things. The European Central Bank backstopping banks uh, in Europe the way the Federal Reserve did during the financial crisis here, because that's the magnitude. And the other thing is industry migrating into the South 
so that these folks have balanced trade with Germany. But if they're going to continue to be importers, and Germany's going to be, continue to be an exporter, they're going to have to borrow and borrow at a pace they can't repay. Do uh, German industries uh, trust uh, Southern European work ethic to actually put plants into Southern Europe? Well, uh, that's a good question. The work ethic would have to change, and it brings us back to the point, can labor market reforms happen quickly enough? Though the German work ethic isn't all that it's cracked up to be. I mean, it's really easy to be the most conscientious guy in the world if you're working 32 hours a week and the government guarantees your job at times of recession. You know, the Europeans like to say they have had the labor market reforms, and on paper they have. But during the financial crisis, the German government just stepped in and financed job share. So the folks really weren't sent home, and they really didn't have to adjust what they do. I don't know that the German model uh, can continue as it has without a captive market in Southern Europe. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's not as plain and as simple as, as people think of just trusting the workers. Peter, a lot of people are looking at stock markets now, specifically the American stock market reaching record highs. And they're wondering, OK, uh, is the worst behind us? And does any of this European stuff actually matter? Well, if the U.S. economy goes into recession, I think those stock market highs will collapse. Uh, and it, it, simply because I, the U.S. recovery is so weak, it's so tepid, that if there is a pan-European recession of enduring length, uh, call it a depression, call it a very long recession, uh, then there will be a substantial reduction in U.S. exports, and that will be enough to take the froth off the market. The U.S. economy doesn't necessarily collapse if Europe collapses, because Europe has been gradually shrinking and collapsing for a long time, and we have been refocusing to Asia. But it will mean that a major source of exports is gone. The Americans will have to adjust. Profitability will take a hit, and so will the market. So we, we can't pretend that Europe can just crater, but it has no effect on us. I mean, it's still roughly 20% uh, of world wealth. I mean, that matters. It certainly does, but that wealth is rapidly dissipating. Uh, we may be looking at a world where Europe is a minor player 20 years from now. I would point out to you that before the Great Depression, the uh, places like Argentina and New Zealand were very, very wealthy on the basis of their resource exports. In the 1950s, their positions in the world had changed dramatically. And that is happening in Europe. I went to Chile after Allende 10 years afterwards, and I was amazed at just how little Chile had recovered. Because if you go through a period of, say, 10 years without reasonable capital investment, uh, a country really does decline. It really becomes much less operative. Uh, Southern Europe is in real danger of that. If we go Peter, I'm going to leave it there, and we'll, we'll talk again. We'll pick this up down the road. Peter Marizzi of the University of Maryland. We love having him on. Thank you so much for the visit, Peter. Don't forget to tune into our Chorus Radio Welcome. Show in markets across the country from Pacific to Atlantic. In Toronto, Talk Radio AM 640, CGOB 68 in Winnipeg, 630 Chet in Edmonton, QR in Calgary, and the Rolco team in Saskatoon and Regina. Give us a call tomorrow.